Hola amigos, Airzonk World Champion back here again. And yeah, I'm sorry for all the recent video posts I've been you know, posting here on this channel that have been like three hours long. But yeah, that's a problem when you're trying to go for like a world championship or something. The playthroughs can be very long and very boring. But yeah, my recent Act Racer one, yeah, that had to be like three hours. Even though I didn't get the top world record on it and it's still in the approval or pre-approval state, yeah, <laughs> I got like a decent enough score and hopefully when it gets accepted, yeah, I'll get second place in the world. So I'll be the world's second best at Razor player, so that'd be kind of cool. But yeah, the one I posted recently, yeah, the Bonds Adventure one, that one is very interesting. Well, it's also three hours long and it's also really boring, but this is the first time ever on a Turgrass 16 game where I achieved a perfect score. So, yeah, there's a, a way that I can become like the next, I don't know, Canadian Billy Mitchell because <laughs> very rarely do you get an opportunity to get, yeah, that perfect score. Yeah, I gotta make sure my mullet is, you know, just right so I look like... <laughs> Billy Mitchell. Yeah, straighten out the hair a little bit. Yeah, that looks like a mess. I'm putting the hat back on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's very exciting for me. <laughs> I thought for sure when I was going to, you know, break a million on Bot's Venture that the score was going to roll over. It was going it was going to go back to zero and I could, you know, still continue playing on and see if I can rack up more points on top of you know, again, 99,999. <laughs> but no, it matched still at that score, and technically it's a perfect record, and if it gets proved, <laughs> it's pretty much on top of it, and I'll be <laughs> the official Bonds Adventure World Heavyweight Champion. That's going to be awesome. And, you know, it'll be like that till the day I die. Nobody else can beat it. <laughs> Unless you get like a faster time or anything, but I don't think Twin Galaxies really recognizes the fastest time unless you go to like another category or something. And yeah, I also got that record too, but that was easy. <laughs> yeah, nobody else had a submission for that. But yeah, <laughs> watch a video if you like at your own risk. You don't have to watch the whole thing unless you're a referee and yeah, that's sadly the bad thing about being a Twin Galaxies referee is that you have to watch these very long and very boring videos to make sure that, yeah, you know, the players aren't cheating. You got to look at it like with a you know, fine tip comb and everything, make sure there's no errors or anything like that. It's not fun, but hey, it's what we got to do. <laughs> and yeah, technically I'm a ref too. That's how I'm able to make submissions and all that. Alright, what else can I talk about since, yeah, this is a little update video. Well, I look on YouTube and I see this very strange story on how Billy, you know, Chaser, Fun the Game Chasers, of course, and Ape and Eric, they were super mad about this one video about how this one YouTuber named The Riches who has like, 400,000 subscribers, I never heard of them, you know, what's a big deal? But the problem is, yeah, this person makes like a <laughs> a very scandalous video where he says that all of these old video games are worth thousands and millions of dollars. <laughs> and the, yeah, the thing was that he was saying like the old Game Boy was worth a thousand dollars. The old Sega Genesis is worth like $2,000 and okay, are they saying that these are like factory sealed units that are still like in the original packaging and are they signed by, I don't know, uh, Gampa Yokoi or Yuji Naka? I don't know, but you know, you look at it and you just see bare bones Game Boys and you know, standalone Sega Genesis and they say they're like in museums and all that, they're super rare and, you know, somebody that actually owns a game store on the weekends, 
Uh, I can tell you for a fact, no, it's not. Like, when somebody brought me in a original Game Boy, I only gave them like $5. You know, honestly, goodness, it's true because there was no batteries in it. I couldn't test it. And if that thing, if it doesn't boot up or if there's no sound, yeah, the system is pretty much worthless. You know, and I get Sega Genesis systems all the time. It's like no rare unit or anything. Sega so like over 20 million of these units worldwide and it was a massive hit for Sega. Probably their biggest hit of all time. Yeah, definitely their biggest hit of all time. And yeah, if you bring it, me in a Sega Genesis expecting $2,000, I'm going to laugh my ass off because I'm just going to tell you, you know, hit the Brits. Most I'll give you for an old Sega Genesis is like $15 to $20. And it all depends on the condition. Like, <laughs> you know, the riches <laughs> and whatever their video was called, they didn't say what type of condition these old systems were in. You know, they just said, go to the attic, your real game system could be worth thousands. Well, what they're not telling you is, what your old system doesn't have like all the cords with it, what the controller's busted. I find with Sega Genesis controllers, the C button is like the first to go. And <laughs> is the thing all moldy and crusty and all junky because that's another problem if you leave it up in the attic what's the condition of your gaming system or the environment because if it has mold on it or anything like that I'm not even going to touch it I'm just going to tell you get out of here you know thanks for coming by but I'm not going to buy that or I'm not even going to touch it with a 10 foot pole <sighs> yeah it just sets a very bad precedent that here are these people that think they know what they're talking about and think they have solid gold saying all right i have this rare unit give me tons and tons of money it doesn't work that way no see there are video games that can be worth the you know into the thousands and all that you know you got the rare occasions where you got like a handful of titles like you know, Clay Fire, Sits Between the Third, Sculptor's Cut, or Magical Chase, Stadium Events, you know, Nintendo World Championships. Those ones could be in the thousands. But again, you only have like a few, very few games that are worth that much. And systems, very rarely would they be worth in the thousands because they made so many of them. I think maybe only like a Adventure Vision from 1980s or something would be worth in the thousands. And that's only if it's in good working condition, it has the original bots, and it's super clean. And only if that. Yeah, you know, just talk to the real experts. Don't go to these like richest websites and, you know, they're going to give you a whole bunch of false hope. No. Once you take it to somebody like me, you're going to get the real facts on what these games are actually worth. And I'm going to, you know, shoot straight from the hip and say, yeah, you got a system that is actually in pretty decent condition. You know, I could give you so much for this. Or I'm going to say, I'm sorry, this is worth nothing. You know, you don't have all the cords with it. You know, it looks like there's a penny inside this. It rattles. I can't take this. Sorry. And, yeah, it's not easy being the shop owner and, you know, breaking the bad news to people and saying that, I'm sorry, your gold mine here is just nothing but dirt. But, yeah, it is good. It can be exciting, too, when somebody does bring me something rare and I can tell them, yeah, you got a pretty good item here. And there have been times before where I told them that, yeah, you got a pretty nice item. You should keep it because I definitely don't have the money to actually give you what you are looking for. <laughs> Again, not super rich or anything. I work at flea market booth. You know, got a reasonable amount of money, but not super rich. <laughs> but there are no get rich 
quit schemes and video games, especially in video game collecting. No. It should be just a fun hobby where people can go down to like a flea market or like their mom and pop store and you know buy games that are at a nice reasonable price and not at these highly inflated you know super rare antique level of bullshit that <laughs> only inflate the price to unreasonable levels and that way nobody can gain no it shouldn't even be putting like a museum behind glass or saying that it's super rare or anything no people should enjoy these systems enjoy these games like when I was playing that Dirt Come and Bounce Adventure that's only like a $10 game <laughs> I still had fun with it <laughs> You know, I was bonking enemies up in the air for like three hours and even though I was tired, hungry, and thirsty and all that, I still had fun, you know, <laughs> because I did that as a kid. I, that's the reason why I'm so good at Bond's Avenger because I used to play that game all the time and I loved it. You know, there's a real science to the gameplay and that's what you should do. You should go down to your local stores, buy that, you know, cheap looking game and just enjoy it <laughs> there should be no <laughs> major emphasis put on rarity or is the game worth too much or is the game worth too little no if you just see something you like and you think it could be a good game just buy it <laughs> you know don't question it so much unless it's like a thousand dollars and definitely you should question it because nobody has that kind of money anyways unless you're like super rich and if you are super rich and you want to buy a ratty old Sega Genesis for that amount of money I guess more power to you but <laughs> yeah you can easily go on eBay right now buy Sega Genesis for 30-40 bucks and yeah that's what they're worth sorry it's not this rare item that they claim to be but yeah, thankfully that video that they posted has been taken down. Yeah, 8-Bit Eric and Billy Chaser definitely are right. And if you just have any questions, go to somebody who's reputable about video games, like somebody who actually owns a game store like me. And yeah, we'll tell you what the real deal is. Okay, and that's it for me. This is Arizonk, World Heavyweight Champion, and hopefully soon, Bon Spencer World Champion. Over and out.